Hey, welcome back to Dope Weston on Film. Back in the late 70s, early 80s, Bertie Higgins had a huge hit with Key Largo and a bunch of other songs that came after that you never heard. But Bertie's back with movies. He's a writer, producer, director. He's even showing up in his own films, award-winning films. <laughs> Bertie Higgins, say hi to Jack Lucarelli, my sidekick. It's Irish, isn't it? Yes, sir. And welcome to the show. <laughs> Let's Man. make a movie. Let's shoot a movie. How'd you do it? What? How'd you transcend... Being at the top of the charts, being a, an incredible um, song singer songwriter, and now you're making big time movies. Well, they ain't big. Well, let me tell you something. Whatever you get it done and you sold sold it and you made a little money on it, it's big time. Oh yeah, we got three of them now. We're working on four. Yeah. I, you know, it's just like I, I'm still touring a lot. I'm touring China a lot. And um, is that what they're calling it now, China? Calling People's Republic of China, I think, is uh, more accurate. I thought it was Ohio. <laughs> Or, out, or down the street in L.A., right? L.A., yeah. No, we, uh, I'm touring a lot in China. I have, fortunate enough right now, to have the, uh, one of the top karaoke songs in all the Pacific Rim countries. What is that? Casablanca. That's right, you sang that too. Which we wrote several years ago, and I put it out, and it, all of a sudden it exploded over there. So I spent a lot of time touring China. And it's wonderful. For you guys who haven't been to China, you need to go. Mm. It's a great thing. Is it really? Oh, it's wonderful. Chinese women like American boys. Yeah. Especially if you have a few jingle, a little jingle in your jeans. A little jingle in your jeans. Which you wouldn't understand. I had no. I've been to China and I didn't need any jingle in my jeans. All I did, right. I did okay with a smile and a wink. I did okay with a smile and a wink. Out, right? <laughs> hey. Well, so I I came out to Burbank from Tampa Bay, a little town called Tarpon Springs, about nine or ten years ago. And put my son Julian through film school. Out How there. go? Stop, 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 stop. How rewarding is it to watch your son grow up with you helping him to achieve his dreams and goals uh, in this industry? It's a great thing. That's got to be because I have I have a young son, and I just think if I can just do anything for him, it would be the greatest thing in the world. Well, Julian, it's amazing because he's extremely talented. Right. I have a drawing when he was in third grade what he wanted to be when he grew up. Mm -hmm. He's got on jodhpurs and a beret, and he's a megaphone. I said, what is that? He said, a film director, Dad. I want to be a film director. A film director. Oh, and that's cute. But he yeah. fulfilled. Yeah. Uh, he went down to Amoeba, which is a large music store down right, in Hollywood, LA, yeah. uh, this past four or five days. And he went on what we call it, uh, calls a scavenger hunt. He found, he shot pictures. All three of our movies are in Amoeba. Give me the titles of your film. The, the first one was called Beast Beneath. Right. Uh, that was distributed. It's been sitting on the shelf for five years. Mm -hmm. And Julian kept going, screw that movie, Dad. I said, never say never. Well, Entertainment One picked it up. Mm -hmm. Second one was Poker Run, which is a biker film. Now, Poker Run's the first film of, of yours that I showed. Right. A you went, oh, man. You but, made Saw look like... Uh, the hills are alive with the sound of music. Did you get enough TNA and blood in this thing? Wow, he man. Directed it? No. Produced, acted in it, wrote it, wrote or co wrote it with Julian. Yeah. And Larry Medill is one of our writers that uh, lives at, our, our, at my house, in fact. So I got my in house. He can't get his own place? I want him there because we write a lot. That sounds like, a, like an episode of a horror film at my place, starring Bertie Higgins. Yeah. You got a writer chained up in the basement. Ju uh, let me finish. Julian went into me, but now this is pretty phenomenal if you think hey about Jack, it. Hey, Jack, if you giggle once in a while, these jokes will be funnier. <laughs> Thank you. you just go. like that. All right, go ahead. Julian went into Amoeba. All three of our films, pop, 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 he took pictures. I, I, I had my own bin as a recording artist, Bertie mm -hmm. Higgins, with mm -hmm. my CDs. Right. And my eldest boy is Diesel Boy, DJ Diesel Boy, mm -hmm. one of the top rave DJs in the world. He's got his own bin. And Aaron just left a band called Old Man Markley, mm -hmm. and they have their own band. Wow. So Julian shot pictures of all this, and I went, these are my kids. And it really, Gordon Lightfoot told me one time on the set of the Murder Griffin show, he went, Bertie, we got to do what we got to do to help the young along. And that's important, guys, as we get older. You know, these youngsters look to us to guide, to show oh, absolutely, the Absolutely, man. But when I saw that, I was just, you know, uh, I am flattered that I did a good job like this. I never thought I could. I, I still don't think you can. Do <coughs> I have no faith in you. Okay. As a father, as a movie maker, okay. as a singer, nothing. That's but cool. you, but you've proven me wrong each time. <laughs> How'd you do it? The newest movie is called. <laughs> Thank you.
the newest movie that is out there. We we had we got Tom Sizemore in it. Tom was a great actor. Tom's an amazing actor. A little touchy at times, but Tom's a, a great actor. A lot touchy, but a great actor. <laughs> the newest movie that is out there. We we had we got Tom Sizemore in it. Tom was a great actor. Tom's an amazing actor. A little touchy at times, but Tom's a, a great actor. A lot touchy, actor. but a great actor. <laughs> it's so funny, Julian. Tom comes up to Julian on the set. We shot it down in Tampa Bay, and Tom says, Julian, Julian. Put the camera over here, man. Let's try it like this. Just yeah, that'll work. That'll work. And Julian's so democratic, All right. di diplomatic. Diplomatic, yeah. He goes, Tom, that's a great idea, but let's try it this way first. And they shoot the scene the way Julian wants to shoot. He goes, okay, let's move on. Boom. There we go. Yeah. And Tom goes humming, humming, humming. Yeah. But Tom is a great improv actor. He's the best I've ever. Seen. I got to tell you something. He was. Uh, he got our our uh, um, Half Life Award at yeah, AOL. Yeah, I was there. And he gave a speech. I don't think there was a dry in the house yeah. when he got done. I, I mean, just a classic, beautiful it. speech from a guy who's been on the ropes and down on the canvas. He's crawling I mean, back up and he's doing well. Yeah. He just put out his new book. Mm -hmm. I think it's called How I Got Out of Here Alive. Terrific. Uh, his manager is now managing me. That's Charles Lago? Charles Lago, yeah. yeah. And Char they've been on the road for the last month and a half with the book. I can see why well. he'd be managing Sizemore, but what's he doing with you? Well, because... Uh, what do you offer the world? Is he with you? I am him. Do you have a pistol or a knife or something? Already? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Break it out. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, this is an incredibly talented man who's done more with his career and his life than 99.9% .9 of the population. To be able to break out in any field, whether it's music or film, entertainment, or in just life, he's done it. So I, I kid him, uh, but I do it with hate. All right, moving on. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, my mind is blown here, man. I'm sitting here very impressed. Are you? Yeah. Thanks, man. Let's talk about the new movie. Hey, about Sizemore, was he stand up on the show? I mean, uh, yeah, it was great. I mean, he was coming out of a, a, a tough time, and we knew it. Why would you choose him to work with if you knew he was? In that, that because I really wanted to break Julian's cherry good. Yeah, so you we did. did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, you did. But no, but he, he handled Tom, and Tom grew to respect uh, our, our crew. We, we, we work with the same crew in all our films. Every now and then I'll bring someone into the fold, but I'm faithful with people that work with us because I believe that everyone's trying to get on up there, man, and uh, anything we can do to help them, we will. Uh, but Tom. Tom, I just can't say enough. I watched him last night in Black Hawk Down again. Oh, I saw it too. And yeah. I'm going, wow. This what is an actor. terrific. Well, you know, I'm Private Ryan. He, he to oh, me, he, he stole every it. scene he was in. Yeah. Uh, but he's doing a lot of films right now. His money has gone way back up again. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Um, be Charles. Uh, Charles has helped him a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, in fact, Tom credits Charles with it. He did it at the at the award show too. Yeah, he was cool. Hey, before we go any further, let's take a look at some of your work. We're going to come back, and you can bore me with the uh, details of how it got made. Well, what are we going to look at? A. That's between me and my audience. You just sit there and. Smile at Jack. He's the best. We'll be right back with more Bertie Higgins here on Dell Weston on film. It's as much a religion as it is a sport. Once they get bit by the bug, they don't go back. No other sport do you go around with an ambulance following you. It's like nothing else. It just captivates you. Every day you find something new in this business. There's million dollar horses out there. You better know what you're doing or you're in trouble. Competition-wise, you either have it or you don't. It's a lot of pressure to be in shape and winning and losing. When you see your horse run and win, it's like your son hitting a home run. I don't know what I would do if, if I didn't have horses in my life. We always train good, but you never know until you run them. You have to be gentle and get the most out of them by being kind to them. It's really a thinking man's or woman's game. There's no greater value on your gambling dollar than a horse you so much hard, they give you so much, and they ask so little in return. Animals give their lives for our pleasure. You know, 
only one horse away from getting back onto the big stage. Give me one. Let me do it just once. Very special thing, but it's hard to actually explain. You gotta come out and check it out for yourself. It came directly at my finger, and it looked like a carrot, apparently. Did you tell Mark you're sorry for biting him? We know he's got good teeth. It's great. Making movies, I can do it all. What do, you, what, do you, what do you mean by that? We have music, writing, acting, set design. Music? Everything. And music especially. It's the most interesting. You guys want to make movies, do it. Because it's total creation. Mm -hmm. You create and make sure you do everything you can in every department. Because once you get up a little bit and you can afford bigger, bigger films, then you, no one will rip you off. No, that's, you that's, know what that prop costs. You know what this yeah. set runs. And and then, and I learned from the are bottom. You, I, are you doing uh, the movies that you can sell, or are you doing the movies that you want to make? Oh, I, I want to make them too, and I can sell them. Yeah. Because you know you got investors, and they're tough to find. So you go up to them and say, "Well, you know, I made this little whatever film. We can't sell it." He knows. Distributors want TNA. You know what this means? They want blood. If it's a horror film, or mm -hmm. if it's a sexy film. Mm -hmm. You don't ever want to shoot a drama without a bang-up cast, and even then it's a risk. I mean, I've seen Julia Roberts and Tom Hanks in films that have stiffed because they're dramas and they just aren't going to work out mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. The new film. Before you talk about the new film, I want to ask you, I want to ask you a quick question. Because I do want to get to that film. Yeah, it's cool. But I want to ask you a quick question. You, you, you brought up a very good point. Jack said, are you making the films you want to make or the films that you can sell? And you said, well, we have investors out there. And you came to the AOF Festival, I think it was four years ago, the first Started time. Started with you, yeah. Uh, 09. And shortly after that festival, I got a phone call. And the guy said, do you know this Bertie Higgins guy? Uh, I might be making an investment with him. I'm not going to say any names. I'm just going to say <laughs> that I got a phone call. They said, should we give him this money? I said, absolutely. <coughs> the guy's as good as they get. And I'm glad that someone gave me that call to verify. Because I was glad to say yes, he's a good guy. Well, oh, thank you. And you've proven to be that. that that's an amazing thing that in, the, in this town, well, in you, this man. business, in this industry, where most people are scumbags, you know, and you have to be a little bit of a scumbag. Don't let me, tell me if I'm wrong there. If I'm, tell me if I'm wrong, because you're dealing with them. It's like saying you're an honest politician. That's a tough call. Well, there's one thing about it that, I, that, I'm, that I'm confident that I am. I am honest, and I pretty much tell people what I think about things, if, it'll, if I think it'll help them. But I never discourage anyone totally, because you never know from whence it's going to come. You know, all of a sudden this horrible writer turns out to be a butterfly and writes. Who's the last person you fired? I, um, uh, I haven't fired anyone. Never from a movie. Never fired anybody no. from a set. Nothing. Well, we tell had, the truth, Bertie. We had an issue with the first AD. That's but right. I, but now, I, but I, but I, I know the story. The, I kept him on the set. But let me say this: you did move him out of the way. Right? Eventually, we didn't use him again. Exactly. But do you think he thinks you're a bit of a scumbag? No. At all. I don't know. You may. Yeah, he does. Do you get a sense? That's what I mean. I don't, I'm sorry, Jack, but what I mean is, everybody's a scumbag to somebody. Somewhere yeah, down the road, you can't get away without, in you know, Jack. We just had a guest on the show, a young girl who Jack fired from a, a position, and we let her go. She wasn't able to do her role, and he's he was talking to her a minute ago, and in the back of her head, she's got to be saying, "Yeah, you, you're talking to me now, but you let me go on that film for whatever reason." You got to be a little bit of a scumbag because someone's going to think of you that way. In this industry, I don't think you can get away. I don't think you can get away well, feel, especially I, if the show is, if, yeah. is if it's about the show. I mean, you got to be Captain Kirk. You think for the good of the ship and the crew. Yeah. So if you got someone who's a problem, mm -hmm. not particularly a talent issue, but a jerk, mm -hmm. yeah, a real jerk. Mm -hmm. I had a I had a key grip one time that was like that, mm -hmm. and I said, yeah, but I goes. kept him on. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, because I'm faithful. When I hire when I hire somebody. I know they're counting to do this work, and I just don't want to cut them loose. But I did sit an actress down one time, and uh, sit her, I sat her down, beautiful girl. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But she was having issues with the dust in the desert in her eyes, and had problems, and a, a little whiny. But I sat her down and said, you're a beautiful girl, yeah. plus you're a good actress. Right. Be careful what you do here, because you don't want to get the word out that you're tough to work with, mm -hmm. because you won't work a lot. And I said, I believe in you, 
Now let's send you down to the clinic, get your eyes fixed up, and let's go back to work. Haven't we all been there? I had to go into a dressing room trailer one day, and the lights were out, and sh tears, and you know, I had to sit there. You got to be kind. Twenty minutes of therapy and uh, kindness, and get her back on the set again. And I believe that she's a good actress. Mm -hmm. So I believe if someone, if I could see that sparkle in there, uh, then we keep them. How tough is it to do? You, both of you said you had experiences. How tough is it for you guys to have to deal with that kind of thing? Uh, uh, especially in the days, you know, litigious climate where everyone's looking for a lawsuit. It comes with a territory, I think, Dell. I used to think that as a producer, you know. Uh, I, I remember one, my first movie, I was midnight out uh, settling a dispute between a writer and the director out by the pool. <coughs> I used to say, hey, you know, we should get the zebra shirts if you're a producer, you know, because we're referees. Right. I, I think it comes with the territory. And, uh, and your AD kind of comment I wanted to make. Sometimes, I don't know what it is, but AD seem to be trained jerks. And, uh, well, they got a tough position. I don't know if we could say that here. You know, uh, but the, <laughs> what? the trained part. Trained, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Very good. Yeah. And, and, and I don't mean to generalize but they got it. A tough you know, position. There, are, there are great ADs yeah, out there. Yeah, but they're going to walk But I wanted to take one by the throat. And night, yeah, yeah. I did. I Push wanted to take connect one connect by the throat, yeah. and my production manager brought me to my senses and said, do not send him home, you know, do not send this man did home. Did you have a talking to with him? Oh, yeah. Well, no, no. I had the first talk to the second, and I said, just tell him to stay out of the way. See, that's the hierarchy that most independent filmmakers don't understand. Yeah. They don't deal with that. You know, you've got your buddy working over here, and a guy who just showed up from Craigslist over there, and another part of the crew over here. You're not going to go through any hierarchy. You're going to say, get off my set. You're going to say, let's straighten it up. I mean, because you're, you're burning through money. Even a tiny drop of water can make a splash. It's the biggest news that this emerald is the most precious stone in the world. To the left, there's an exit, but you go the other way to the right. right. Make sure you deactivate any motion detector. Right. There's a computer in front of the computer at the bottom. Right. Is it? Listen to me. We're all the same. It's just the way you play the game, right? If I'm lying, I'm dying. It's me, Eddie Riesel. We're partners. Who besides you knew that this gem was going to be delivered? <laughs> I got you. I got you, Rossi. Not my house, mother. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. You're not very good at this. Sometimes you have to look inward to see what you are really all about. What's the, what's the new film? It's a simple movie, but not simple. It's probably going to be the toughest thing I ever shot. We have a cast of almost 60 mm -hmm. and a low budget. But that's a challenge. I love it, man. We only have that, we'll make it. But a couple of years, maybe four years ago, I went to a show in Branson, Missouri, where I was doing play in one of the theaters with mm -hmm. my band. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it was The Comets, from Bill Haley and The mm -hmm. Comets, playing at the Dick Clark Theater. And Thank all God you said Clark. Woo! Go ahead. Oh. Okay. I missed it. Over At any rate, phew, I love you, Dell. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. All right. All right, the movie. Yes. I went and saw the Comets, and I've seen shows all over the world. I saw the Beatles at, at the Atlanta Stadium. That's how far back it goes. Mm -hmm. They were one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life, and the average age, the drummer was 86. 86. The original comments. You mean for the comments, okay. Comments. Yeah. Took off on a drum solo for five minutes and didn't miss a lick. Right. And I started off as a drummer for Tommy Rowe. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So I understand drums. Right. And the band was so wonderfully entertaining. And Marshall Lytle, playing the upright bass, the original player, was writing a book called Still Rockin' Around the Clock. Mm-hmm. Well, the average age in the band was like 75. Right. Well, he wrote the book, and the book was pretty good. And he came to me a year ago and said, and we, and we became fast friends, Bertie, would you please shoot a movie about my book? Wow. And it's an expose on Bill Haley. And Bill mm-hmm. Haley, for the, was for the most part a good guy, but there were times he wasn't so good, really tight with the money, and, didn't, and the band went to him for a $50 a week raise, they were only making 175 a week, and he had millions selling records, they mm-hmm. wouldn't give him a raise, so they quit. But I said, Marshall, I, I, his, his name is Marshall Lytle, I call him Tommy. I said, Tommy. If his name is Marshall, why do you call him Tommy? Because his other name is Tommy Page. Oh, okay, whatever. All right, go ahead. <laughs> hey, I'm so done with this. Go ahead. Well, the Comets signed a deal with Decca Records, and uh, Rock Around the Clock was the B side of the single. Right. And Alan Freed broke it. Right. Big DJ out of. Okay. I remember, yeah. Okay. And he's one to coin the phrase rock and roll, roll rock yeah, and yeah. roll. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He would call it Moondoggy. Right. Well, to, 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 to encapsulate the story without dragging it on too much. You're not dragging. Listen, I love having you here, and your stories are fascinating. Uh, well, <laughs> right out of my generation, too, man. I'm loving it. Yeah. He's old. Oh, yes. He's old guy. Old, yeah. Old. yeah, he's old. So am I. He's like you, only young. <coughs> so I said, Tommy, l- let me chew on it. So I read the book two or three times, chowed on it for a while, gave it to Larry Medill. Right. I said, Larry, put together a script. That's the writer you get trapped in your house, in yeah, the he's, basement. Okay. He's trapped there going, please. Yeah. But uh, I said, write a script around this. Give me a script. Knock it out in three or four days, and we'll t- tweak it together. So he came up with a script that was so-so. So we started working on it, tightening it up, and I didn't want to do the movie until I started thinking, Bertie, this is the origins of rock, rock and, and roll. roll. Wow! We came out of the darkness of World War II, and six years later, these guys have created this iconic sound which conquered the world. Right. It's never been done. Right. No one's ever done a film about it. And. I, I'm, mm. It just excited well, you, me to know. You can capture that feeling, man. Well, you know, it's, it's. I like seeing the Beatles at the Cavern Club. How it all kind of started and got rolling. The rest, okay, we all know about. But to see Bill Haley and Marshall sitting at a kitchen table at his mama's house, banging on an acoustic guitar, writing "Crazy Man Crazy" was their first hit mm-hmm. before "Rock Around the Clock." And I said, "We're going to shoot this." Song. It's as much a religion as it is a sport. Once they get bit by the bug, they don't go back. No other sport do you go around with an ambulance following you. It's like nothing else. It just captivates you. Every day you find something new in this business. Competition-wise, you either have it or you don't. It's a lot of pressure to be in shape and winning and losing. When you see your horse run and win, it's like your son hitting a home run. I don't know what I would do if, if I didn't have horses in my life. We always train good, but you never know until you run them. You have to be gentle and get the most out of them by being kind to them. It's really a thinking man's or woman's game. There's no greater value on your gambling dollar than a horse you so much hard, they give you so much, and they ask so little in return. Animals give their lives for our pleasure. You're only one horse away from getting back onto the big stage. Give me one, and they do it just once. <laughs> Nothing like it. It's a very special thing, but it's hard to actually explain. You gotta come out and check it out for yourself. Directly at my finger, and it looked like a carrot, apparently. Did just... you tell Mark you're sorry for biting him? We know he's got good teeth. So, that's what the movie's about, and uh, we're going to try to tell a story. 
I'm going to ask you to come back with Julian so we can finish the story. Okay. Because I want to see, see you again. I'm going to get you scheduled the right way and get you guys down here and, and uh, talk about it. I'd love to hear the rest of the story. Have you seen the new Blackmagic 4K camera? I have not seen it. You know, the old one was 2.5K. I got a sister named Black Magic. I've seen her. I, I did, too, the other night at the, Roy, at the Red Roof Inn. That's her. Hey, listen, you've been watching Del Weston on film with the great Bertie Higgins and my sidekick, <coughs> Jack Lucarelli. We'll be back with more Bertie Higgins and Julia next time you show up. We'll Absolutely. Correct? Absolutely. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Why wouldn't they? I didn't ask. Don't answer a question with a question. Not only is it rude, but it hurts me. Hey, well, hurts do people take you so seriously? Sorry. Well, I, the reason I ask you is this: because you're a pretty girl, and I'm a pretty girl, and people don't take me serious as an actress. Oh. So I do. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's because you're skeevy. <laughs> Even a tiny drop of water can make a splash. I don't know if I should tell you or not because it's the biggest news. This emerald is the most precious stone in the world. There's an exit, but you go the other way to the right. right. Make sure you deactivate any motion detector. Right. There's a computer in front of the computer at the bottom. Right. It's a, listen to me. We're all the same. It's just the way you play the game, right? If I'm lying, I'm dying. It's me, Eddie Riesel. We're partners. Who besides you knew that this gem was going to be delivered? <laughs> I got you. I got you, Rossi. Not in my house, mother! Get the hell out of here! Get the hell out of here! You're not very good at this. Sometimes you have to look inward to see what you are really all about.